Greetings YouTube and welcome to the video. I figure some of you have already started scoffing at the title of this video with thoughts or out loud statements about how the Triumph Bonneville variant or the BMW R9T variant or the insert your favorite modern retro here is way better modern retro because it has a current naked bike performance numbers and I'm so glad that you did because in my opinion there's a massive difference between a thoroughly modern motorcycle with state-of-the-art naked bike performance specs dressed up like a retro motorcycle and a modern motorcycle that honors and recreates the engine performance, feeling, and exhilaration of the original motorcycle it is badged and modeled after. Some may say, but these bikes were the cutting-edge state-of-the-art at the time. To which I say, Triumph does make a modern cutting-edge bike, the Street Triple 765 and BMW makes an incredible S1000RR. If that's what you're honoring, you know, the cutting edge and state of the art, why not get those? In my experience, there are usually four to five different categories of retro or heritage and modern retro bike enthusiasts. In the first camp are those that require all components of their decades old motorcycle are 100% completely original and unrestored. The second is where the major cosmetic bits of the decades old motorcycle are original and some of the components have been updated for safety and or performance. The third is where it looks like an older motorcycle but it's a high performance thoroughly modern machine underneath. The fourth is a fully restored heritage motorcycle that has been refreshed and uses new parts but not new technology. For instance, the drum brakes are reconditioned or replaced with new drum brakes. The fifth, and this is the category that I fall into and why I believe the W800 is the best modern retro motorcycle. A person who loves the look, feel, and nostalgia created by a modern, thoroughly reliable motorcycle, including current safety features that also faithfully recreates the engine performance and feelings of riding the original bike with all brand new materials and engineering. I did mention a couple of great motorcycle companies besides Kawasaki. Why didn't I pick those? Let's start with Triumph. What connection do modern Triumph Bonnevilles really have with the 1960s and 1970s Triumph? Less than the Kawasaki W800 has with the original W1. Mainly because Kawasaki is the same company that made both bikes, not a company that went out of business and then the name was bought by another company. Not even to mention the air and oil cooling or water cooling added to increase the performance numbers, whereas the W800 remains air cooled. The Triumph Faithful may be calling foul. The W1, Maguro, was modeled after and or with licensing from Norton, BSA, and AJS. This is true. That was 60 years ago. The W650 wasn't and the W800 isn't trying to recreate a 1950s AJS, BSA, or Norton. It's recreating a 1960s Kawasaki W1. The W800 still uses a 360 degree crank. The new Triumph is a 270 degree crank, which means to diehards, no longer a true parallel twin because the cylinders don't move together. They are offset. The R9T even had a slash 5 variant, reaching back to the R75-5 series of the early 70s. But instead of pushing out 50 horsepower like the German sport bike of the early 70s, the R9T's air and oil cooled 1200cc boxer motor cranks out a hefty 109 horsepower. To quote BMW, the R9T is a design exercise with a thoroughly modern R1200 motorcycle. I am a huge fan of BMW motorbikes. I found the R9T a little tall and with an uncomfortable seat. And with all premium bike brands, it was a little spendy. Are the Triumphs, BMWs, Moto Guzzi's, Indians, and other modern retro motorcycles great bikes? Of course they are. Are they thoroughly modern, including impressive power plants that keep pace with other models in the same year? 100% they do then why the heck do I think, after a year of owning and riding the W800, do I think that it's the best modern retro motorcycle out there? I'm glad I asked, so here we go. The W800 is affordable. 
beautiful and easy while remaining inexpensive to customize. I have only done regular maintenance on the W800 as per the manual. Absolutely nothing has gone wrong. Kawasaki is a top shelf manufacturer and the build quality is second to none. The motor is over-engineered and under-stressed, and when properly cared for, should last the lifetime of the owner. The gearbox is the epitome of precision and shows the exceptional build quality and engineering that went into this motorcycle. The W800 feels, sounds, and performs like a retro motorcycle except for bulletproof reliability, safety features like disc brakes with ABS, modern electrics, and new steel. Riding the W800 takes me back in time, every time, to my youth when I was piloting a 1972 motorcycle, except that I can use a modern disc brake with ABS, have LED lighting, and I don't have to be a competent roadside mechanic and carry an assortment of spare parts. The W800 vibrates from 4 to 5,000 RPM, exactly like Heritage 360-degree crank parallel twins do which annoys some riders and delights others with its nostalgic accuracy. I love when I leave the W800 parked and come out to see other riders trying to figure out what it is. Almost always guesses are on custom modified BSA Norton or AJS, especially now that the stock seat, the only place where Kawasaki has its name, has been replaced. The bevel drive on the engine is absolutely gorgeous and attracts attention from other riders whenever they see it. Did I absolutely love everything about riding the W800 right away? Yes, I did. Did it stay that way the full year? No, it did not. There were modifications that I made. First was that I put the 28mm risers on the W800. It was slightly leaned forward, but just enough that I felt the pressure on my hands and wrists when not at speed. Being an older rider, I'm in my 50s, and having had a serious motorcycle wreck in my youth that left long-standing injuries, it was enough to warrant its change. There was another comfort adjustment I made as well. The stock seat on the W800 is period correct looking and an okay seat. As long as the riding I was doing was under two hours. I could go another hour, but was definitely whining about it near the end. This again, due to injuries. In this case, an old tailbone injury. After long deliberation, reading dozens and dozens of reviews, and talking to others who had personal experience with different seats, I chose the Omega Racer Comfort Seat as my replacement, and I am very happy with that change. There are a ton of modifications that can be made to the W800, both cosmetically, comfort-wise, and even some performance upgrades. Just need to know where to find them. I've used Omega Racer, Amazon, and We Bike Japan to source some cosmetic bits and going to replace the stock Dunlops with Michelin tires for better handling. I recommend the W800 for those who want to experience the feeling of riding a retro heritage motorcycle without having to worry about safety features or about their roadside mechanic skills. If you ever owned a 1960s to mid-1970s motorcycle in your youth that you wish you had somehow the foresight to keep and want to be reminded of the magic you felt when you rode back then, I wholeheartedly recommend the W800. If you're into city cruising or taking a motorized two-wheeled stroll across the countryside while feeling a blast of nostalgia, this is absolutely the bike for you. There is more than enough motor to move you along, an amazing exhaust note, albeit a bit quiet for some, and the W800 is highly regarded as one of the most, if not the most, beautiful modern retro motorcycles. It goes beyond the specs. If after all, what you're looking for is a motorbike that is a modern retro, including engine performance, and not just another high-powered naked bike dressed up like one. Thank you for watching. Keep the shiny side up and the rubber side down. Cheers.